Hello, so in, uh, in this video we're just going to be looking at trigonometric ratios, we're going to be looking at sine, uh, cosine and tangent ratios and how they relate to triangle and just then we're going to look at a couple of questions where these could actually be used. So um, first of all, if you take a right angle triangle here and you select one of the angles that isn't a right angle triangle, you need to let you can label the different sides as shown. So the larger one, the one that's opposite the right angle is known as your hypotenuse. The one opposite the angle that you're looking at, so straight across from it, is called your opposite. And then the other one that's left over, the one that's beside it but not the hypotenuse, is your adjacent. So your ratios are as follows. So your sine is equal to your opposite over your hypotenuse. So your cosine is your adjacent over your hypotenuse and then your tan is your opposite over your adjacent. And the way you could remember that is there's a number of different rhymes. One would be Sakatoa. So if you just spell out the letters like so, S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. So Sakatoa. Or you might um, use Silly Old Harry, Caught a Herring, Trawling Opposite Argentina. Or any other rhyme you can use to remember it. So we'll have a look at a couple of questions. So we'll just start off. We're going to look at two different triangles. And I've actually purposely taken these two, two triangles and I've just doubled the measurements here. So you can see that the hypotenuse and this is five, it's just doubled to be 10 here. This is three double to six and this is four double to eight. And I just want to show the relationship between them. So if all, if it's, if all sides are doubled, that means these angles need to stay the same as well. So it's gonna have actually the same relationships and we're gonna expect the same, the same answer. So we'll try our first one here. So if we look, we need to label our sides first. So this one here, the one opposite our right angle is our hypotenuse. The one opposite our angle is our opposite. Then our other one that's left over that's beside it but not the hypotenuse is your adjacent. So we'll work out sine first of all. So sine is equal to, remember our rhyme silly old Harry. So that's our opposite over our hypotenuse. So that's going to give us, if we go to our opposite is three, and then our hypotenuse is five. So we're going to get sine is three over five for that particular angle. So sine, and I should have put down sine of A there. So we're going to put down next tan of A. So the tan of that angle then is going to be trying on or trawling, sorry, I meant to say trawling over or opposite Argentina. So opposite over adjacent. So this one here will be trying O or tan opposite. And then our adjacent, as we can see there is four. Then finally, we'll just do cosine A is going to be uh, caught a herring. So it's adjacent over hypotenuse. I probably should have done these in different orders, but we'll do it as it is here anyways. Um, so adjacent over hypotenuse, you can see that's just going to be 4 over 5. Now we'll come down and we'll have a look at our other question. We're going to see, we're actually going to expect the same answers for these because this angle is going to have to be the same as this for the reason I showed earlier that all these are just doubled. So that angle is going to remain the same. So therefore it should just have the same properties. So, you, so sine will be, um, that's going to be opposite over hypotenuse, and that's equal to, so just label my sides here first, so again that's my hypotenuse, this is the opposite, opposite that angle, and this is the adjacent here. So opposite over hypotenuse, you can see is six over 10. And then if we break that fraction down, we can divide this by three, and this, or this by two and this by two. So if this by two gives us three, and then 10 divided by two is gonna give us five. So we're gonna get three over five. And we'll do the other two here. So tan again, which is, and I'll just put O over A, so opposite over adjacent. And we can see over from our diagram there, that's gonna be six over eight. And then we break that down, divide them both by two, and you're going to get three over four. 
and then the last one we're going to have is cosine and that's going to be equal to a over h so adjacent over hypotenuse and we'll put that down adjacent there 8 over hypotenuse so 8 over 10 and again we can divide them by 2 so you're going to get 4 over 5 and if we just examine the difference between the two of them you can see that we get the exact same ang angle so always if you get an angle of say 40 degrees you're going to get the same value for tan no matter what the triangle is um, and we'll be looking at that again where we're going to deal with a unit triangle to get get the to get them different ratios so the next thing i'm going to show you actually is an inverse um trigonometric property so when you've got a sign so if sine of that angle b is equal to 305 it's actually possible to work out what the angle b is and you need to go onto your calculator and you're going to use this function here sine and it has a little minus one up here to re represent the fact it's an inverse so if you take your sine of that angle which is three over five you'll be able to actually find the angle now just to show you quickly how could you find that in your calculator i'm going to zoom into this one here so if you look at this picture and this is a standard casio calculator that's used for say leave insert maths if you look in at this one if you press shift which is here and then you click sine you'll get inverse sine cosine you'll get inverse cosine and then tan you'll get in for inverse tan so if you put that into your calculator for this one and um, you'll get in fact i should say that you'll roughly get so just delete this so roughly because it needs to be corrected to two decimal places as uh, 0 0.64 Four. and you'll actually find if you take any one of these ones here say if you take the inverse tan we'll try that you're still going to be getting that angle so it's tan and in this case it was three over four you're actually going to end up getting the exact same answer so you'll get roughly 0 0.64 and the same thing will happen if you take cosine as well so we're just going to have a look over here and just try a few questions related to that. So this one, we had actually all the different sides. So we were able to um, we were able to pick any one of them functions. For this, I've actually given a number of different triangles that are missing one of the sides. So um, for here, we're going to actually try and select the appropriate function to find, to find the angle that's missing here. So you can see for this one, we're missing the angle A. And we've got this one and this one. So let's just label them. So we've got our hypotenuse here. Then we've got our opposite. So we're looking straight opposite our angle there. A more, I'll actually just label these with H, O, or A. And then you've got your adjacent here. So what we're going to do, what function will we pick? So look at our three different ones and I'll write them up here. So you can see from these functions here, we're going to have our opposite and adjacent. So we'll see where we have them here. So you can see tan is going to give us opposite over adjacent. So tan function is the handiest one to pick here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the inverse tan and we'll write down this just first. It's not necessary to write this step, but we'll just write down tan of A is going to be equal to our opposite over adjacent. So that's 10 over 4. which can be broken down further. Not necessary to put it into your calculator, but just for ourselves, we'll break that down into five over two by dividing the top and the bottom by two. So that means if you take the inverse tan of five over two, you're going to actually get A. So five, inverse tan of five over two is going to be equal A, which is going to be, and I'll say again, like last time, um, I just need to rub this out because it's going to be a decimal place and we're going to correct it to two decimal places. So it's going to be roughly equal to 68.19. Actually, one, it's actually going to end up one, correct that. It's actually just going to be two when I correct it. And just to note something from earlier, I actually didn't mention it. When I was finding out my um, angles here, I actually had my calculator set into radians. So you can have your calculator set into radians or else you can have it set into degrees. So back when I did this one, we were trying this one, it was actually set into radians. 
so 0 0.64 which isn't exactly degrees but this time i've actually changed the settings on my calculator to have it in degrees so um it's important to indicate which one of these you're going to be working with so i can just put a little dot there to indicate that that's degrees so we'll try another one so here we're going to have two other um we're just going to find out which what each of these sides are so we've got our hypotenuse let's label that by a h opposite uh, opposite here is o and then we've got our adjacent so we can see this time we've got our hypotenuse and we've got our opposite so again we just look over here so we've sine opposite over hypotenuse and then the rest of them and we see which one is appropriate so here we've got our hypotenuse and our opposite so we're going to look over and see where do we have our hypotenuse and our opposite we can see we have it there with sine so we're going to say sine is equal to our opposite over our hypotenuse which is 8 over 15 which we can't break down so that's sine of c and then so if we want to find sine minus 1 that's going to give us the angle c so sine minus 1 8 over 15 which gives us 32.23 degrees and again i forgot to put in we'll just make that roughly equal to because it's not exactly that I've, I've just rounded it up to two decimal places so we'll try our final one here and um, we're going to have so for this one we're going to have our sides labeled as follows that's our hypotenuse here that's our opposite and then that's our adjacent so for this one we're going to have our hypotenuse and adjacent so we'll look where that is over here so we've got hypotenuse and adjacent given by cosine so we're going to say cosine is equal to so cosine of b in this case is equal to our adjacent over our hypotenuse so that's going to be 6 over 10 and then if we want to break that down we can and um, it's not necessary to break it down it'll still work on your calculator but just to keep things a bit tidier so for this case we want to find our angle b we're going to say it's going to be the inverse cosine of 3 over 5 and that'll give us an answer roughly equal to 53 point one three degrees and we'll just look at one final one now that i've done out so i've actually just put the angle in a different spot so we're going to need to think about where everything is so for this one here we're going to do our hypotenuse first of all here that's the larger side the one that's opposite the right angle and then because we're dealing with this angle this time our opposite must be down this side here because it's opposite that angle so the opposite is there and then straight across from there is your adjacent so it's the other one that's left over is your adjacent so if we look at this one here we have our hypotenuse and we have our opposite so if we look over here we have our opposite and hypotenuse that means we're going to be using our sine function so we're going to look sine of d we'll state it first is equal to our opposite over our hypotenuse so that's 5 over 12 which we can then break down into we can't actually break that down any further so we're just going to find to find that angle d then we're going to say the inverse sine of 5 over 12 and that's again roughly equal to 24.62 degrees so that's the basic and um, just a basic explanation of of trigonometric functions and thank you for watching